This is Evelyn. This is Natalie. And we're the Goldens. Our goal is to spread love, positivity, and help people start their healing journey. Today we'll discuss different types of toxic traits in relationships. Evelyn and I will share our personal experiences. So what does a toxic relationship mean? So the main definition for toxic relationship is one in which two people don't communicate or relate to one another in, a, in any healthy way and where conflict easily arises. Uh, some of these types of toxic characteristics are being controlling where one person makes all the decisions. They want to control every action, telling the partner or others what to do, what to wear, or even like who to spend time with and mm-hmm. who to talk to. Another crazy one is envy or jealousy. And this one's not brought up. This one's really scary. And sometimes um, the partner is jealous of the other partner. Yeah, you get like, they get competitive with one another. Yeah. In a very weird way. Another toxic trait could be uh, digital monitoring. Um, It keeps, for example, the partner can keep tabs through all social media. They know who you're following. They're like, why did you follow this person? Why did you like that picture? The, uh, like, you blog. know, the pictures. Yeah. Fucking stalking, bro. Yeah. They know what you like. They know what you're looking at. Um, or, or, for example, you posted a story and the, the it's like a meme or something. It's like a stupid ass meme. And then the person's like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, why did you post that? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that, that, one's, that one's pretty creepy. Um, but it can get obsessive. And that's where, like, controlling kind of ties in as well. Dependence or being dependent on your partner or someone. Uh, feeling like you can't do anything on your own mm-hmm. or without the person. That's scary. Yeah, I know, I know. Or, or check this out. Feeling like you can't even live without the person. Like when people tell you, I'm going to kill you myself if you if break the, up with me. Oh my god. Have you ever been told that? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Multiple times. <sighs> Damn. Not even long relationships to either. Like What? Like, yeah. A, like a short term, like when you're just talking to a girl from Tinder? Mm, a little bit longer than <laughs> oh shit my bad. oh my like, dad that girl's crazy shit. no 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 a little longer than oh, okay than that. what did she tell you it was more like not in those exact yeah. words but it was more like i don't think i can be without you whoa yeah red flag ding, red ding, flag ding. and i was like dip <laughs> oh, fucking dodged a bullet there yeah Another toxic relationship trait or characteristic that I wanted to mention, um, and a lot of people might know this one, is when you feel like you're losing yourself or um, or your self-care. And yeah. you just feel like you have this instant disconnect within yourself and you put other people first. Guys, if you feel like you have not gone out and bought yourself a nice pair of jeans, a nice pair of sneakers. For that ass. For, <laughs> for the booty. <laughs> or even gone to have a nice workout, a nice walk, a nice run. If you feel like you haven't even fixed your hair, if you haven't done your nails. And and you don't have to like, you know, just getting ready and doing your nails. It's because, uh, you know, my girlfriend's very girly and she instantly thinks of all those really cute things. But, you know, just for example, taking a walk or... You know, doing things that you really enjoy or think back and think, fuck, like, what what did I love to do back then? What did I enjoy doing by myself? Listening to music. Having... That's a simple one, yeah. 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 Nice coffee, nice drink, and just listening to music, but by yourself, you know? Things that you used to do back then, before your relationship, before you felt like you had to invest all your time in that person. What were you doing for yourself? before and if you're already questioning that if you already had that instant thought, yeah like oh i'm trying to think of like when was the last time i put myself first then there's something wrong because there needs to be a balance we all have needs and if you're giving everything to that person you're not giving yourself that care that love that you deserve so for me, something, I'm going to just give you an, an example, like, but for me, um, previous relationship, you know, most important thing for me was to work out, you know, that helps my mental state and it helps me out a lot just to get through my hard days at work, you know, and I had stopped doing what I used to love to do so much and it just became so difficult for me to kind of go back and regroup, you know, so... 
guys, like, do all that you can to be the person that you once were. Not that you're trying to relive the past, but stay true to yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Stay true to who you are. Love yourself. Have you ever heard of the term walking on eggshells? Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you that before? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they, they've told me that plenty of times and it's just it's not a good feeling so i was like all right um you know what what does it mean I, people say it a lot but what does it actually mean um obviously it's another unhealthy characteristic in a relationship to to even feel like that um just worrying about bringing up problems you're constantly just worrying about that mm-hmm. provoking tension um and then the person just becomes conflict avoidant what does that mean uh, just keeping all your issues to yourself. You want to keep everything to yourself, every thought, yeah. everything that you think is going going to create conflict. You just don't want to share it. It's scary. Yeah, you're like, no, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to cause a fight. I don't want to cause problems. I don't want to be the person to cause that distress. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're always in constant stress. Yeah. So, even if a person is just hoping for change, that's another toxic trait. Mm-hmm. sure and uh for example being stuck in the good memories of the past or th- or just mm-hmm. being stuck at the beginning of a relationship like those thoughts of like oh what could have been all those beautiful memories like literally the first week that you were dating with a person <laughs> it's it's, it, it's, it's, it's not to make thoughts yeah. they're strong like they want to keep you there it's not to mistake in this we're not making fun of an- anybody out there listening to this obviously we're saying it because it's happened to us <laughs> so yeah. we kind of went break it down you know and dissect <laughs> yeah that that's not okay it's not okay to just be there every day in a constant cycle of like you know tomorrow will be better tomorrow will be a better day mm-hmm. but then <laughs> nothing ever gets better yeah no uh, did you ever feel like back then everything was just going to shit? Everything was falling apart in your life? Um, and then, you know, every day you wake up with that tiny drop of faith. And then something happens, like something shitty, something horrible. Your partner did something bad for you, bad to you. And you feel like you're just back to square one. You're in this endless fucking timeline. You're like stuck in a loop. Yeah, I was telling you, <laughs> I gave you examples earlier, like kind of like you're freaking playing Monopoly. Yeah. You know how you're always like back there and it seems like a forever non-ending game that you could just go on and on and on. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels. Or even being in a roller coaster like with all these highs and lows and never having like that stability that you're going to grow with this person at all. It's just like you're just kind of stuck there and you stay there stuck for freaking years and years. And then it's like you realize that you're losing all your time, your youth the possibility the possibility the endless possibility of you advancing in anything and and this could be maybe um realizing that you could heal much sooner than later realizing your worth loving yourself working yourself every year to make yourself a better person you lose all of that because you're investing all this time on this person that gave you hope at the very beginning of a relationship and let's face it guys sometimes it's it might not be the other person's fault. Maybe you guys are not meant to be, but why do we want to feel like, okay, this person's it for me? Guys, if it's not working out for you, let it go and don't, move on. Don't force it. No, don't force it. Like, you're going to stay there stuck, stay there stuck for many years to come. And, I, like, what do you mean by that? Have you ever felt like that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, testimony right now, right here. <laughs> Uh, I know you've told me about, like, your 10-year relationship before me. Holy shit, man. Um, 10 year. Did you feel like you were walking on eggshells? (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Absolutely, yeah. I did. It was, it was, um... It sucks when they tell you that. Like, when they told me that, I was like... What does that mean? (laughs) the fuck is that? Walking on eggshells? (laughs) Kashingas? Yeah. I was like, okay, dude. All right. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Um, so I felt like I was stuck in this loop that was my reality these 10 years thinking that I was gonna, yeah, I know. It's a, wi- oh my a gosh. time now. I started at what? It was when I was 14? No. Yeah, 14. Yeah, all of my youth. And I don't want to go back and say, 
oh my God, you know, you know, so much time has passed by because I don't want to make that my reality right now today and how I feel today because I feel so much better and I'm way past all of the things I had to learn. I mean, I know there's more to come, but of course there's maturity now. I'm not as naive as I was before, but definitely like these, you know, when you're young and somebody tells you, oh yeah, I'm going to pull down like the sun, the moon and the stars for you. And you're like, okay, great. Like, let's fucking do this because your whole other part of your life is going to shit. Right. And I'm not saying this because I'm putting it out there, you know, but I could just be going through something yeah, at the same time. Exactly. That person's just making it even fucking worse. Yeah. But, but you don't see it. You don't see it because, in the moment. You don't see it. Yeah, exactly. You don't see it because that's like the one highlight of your day. Well, because you don't know anything else. Because you when don't know better. When someone's stuck in a toxic relationship, you don't know what's out there. You don't know that you're in a toxic relationship. At that point in my life, um, that relationship to me was everything. Right? You're young. You're naive. Everything else around you. It's just not making sense, right? We live in this world and it's so scary and things happen and trauma happens. And there's this like one little, like you said, like this little glimpse of hope that you're going to be able to make it with this person and that this person loves and cares for you. But again, you don't know again because (laughs) that's, I mean, that's basically all you, yeah, who the fuck knows at that age, right? So I felt like this person had very narcissistic behavior Um, examples of a narcissistic behavior means, um, you're focused or these individuals are focused on superficial matters. Um, the conversations are always about them. They will dictate and they're like, they say that they're the life of the party. Um, sometimes they're extremely sensitive to criticism. So if you try to approach this person with your personal criticism of like, Hey, like, I think we should do this or, you know, they take really big offense to it and they don't want to sit down with you and to, kinda, like change or just to debrief anything. Like if there's a conflict, to talk be- or exactly any, or any change around them. Right. Exactly. It's like, basically I'm going to get defensive because I don't know how to handle this because I'm perfect. And you know, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> Um, other things could be like, um, knowing how to manipulate others. And in a way I felt like I was very manipulated. And one of the deepest, deepest things that I will share with you guys is, and just because I want to make you guys feel comfortable in knowing that this is a safe place for us to kind of discuss and for you guys to realize, Hey, if this is going on, maybe this is a sign that, you know, I should do things differently for myself. And if you came across this this podcast, like, I'm glad you did. Welcome. And that means that you're meant to be here. Exactly. You're meant to listen to this at the right, perfect time. Exactly. It was always, like, her opinion, her conversation, her experiences, her, 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 you know? And I don't even, I don't even think that sometimes people realize that they're fucking up. And sometimes they might know that they're fucking up. But anyways, whatever the case is... Yo, when someone's a toxica, like... You're toxica for life. You're toxica for life. (laughs) Another thing would be um, just, for example, the jealousy. So, again, going out and stuff and being around other individuals. Sometimes she would make me feel like I was cheating or doing something wrong. She would make me feel... Because just by the simple fact that I was talking to someone else or because they would ask for my number... Um, and you know, she would get very, very upset and walk away from me, you know, at these places when we're coming out of events and things like that. It was just so uncomfortable and it was always so much drama. And I feel so badly for my friends that, um, yeah, that's embarrassing. That's an embarrassing situation to be in. But the, the biggest, the biggest thing of all is being in a room full of family members specifically her family members and not being acknowledged whatsoever so that is why i'm saying now guys like you need to love yourself because if someone can and i believe it i believe it when people say you know this person it's not that somebody makes you do something it's just that you're so easily manipulated by their behavior you're so scared and Having trauma as a child from your parents, from whomever your caregiver was, does not help the situation at all. At all. It does not help it at all. They say that you learn a lot from your past mistakes. And I I, I have learned from my mistakes, especially my past Mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we have. You have. 
Um, and my goal is just to like wake people up so they can see their mistakes and learn from them as well. Um, especially when you had the time to sit down and reflect on everything that has happened in your life. Like my single days, I've had Those. so much extra time. <laughs> yeah. There was days where you either felt crazy or you were like having the time of your life. It was just like either or, you know, there was like no balance. But I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Yeah, and, and that's what happened to me. I just had so much time. But you can use that time for good or for bad. Exactly. You can use that time to better yourself and to heal. Or you can use that time to, to waste like, time. <laughs> waste time, basically party, drink, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. All in moderation, right? Yeah. But too much of everything is bad. Exactly. You want everything to be balanced. Yeah. <laughs> But just, you can't, you have to do either or, or just stay balanced. Do a little bit of bad, do a little bit of good, but don't <laughs> don't go too much to each, to to each, each side, side or just stay in the good side because you always want to heal. You, you don't want to go and, uh, you know, have sex with somebody else and sleep with them and then gain their fucking, exchange that energy, a, horrible negative energy with them. Exactly. For so what? save yourself some time. Yeah, and don't go out there hurting people. Come on, guys. Like, we're better than this. We are so much better than this. You don't want to go and take your broken self <laughs> to someone else. And I can say this, and we can both say this because we have both done it. And our goal is to keep you guys a little sane and on the straight path. All right, guys. So the whole point to this is that you can change and to do better for yourself and to heal yourself and and don't go spreading negativity to other people or use them because karma's real. Don't be used and don't use people. Like don't don't fuck around with karma. Karma is real. Mhm. We just don't want you guys to keep reliving negative moments in your life because those negative moments don't define you. You are better than this. Those experiences happened already and they happened for a reason or they're happening for a reason. But you need to be able to pull yourself out of it. Grief what you need to grieve within a measurable amount and then start trying to dissect what is important to you and what you can do to make yourself feel better. All right, so my beautiful girlfriend Natalie shared some of her past experiences with her 10-year relationship toxic (coughs) toxic (laughs) relationship (laughs) but hey i'm not a saint over here uh my past relationship lasted four and a half years almost five so half of yours babe (laughs) half your uh, time it it began when when i was only 18 years old so i was kind of young too (sighs) okay well obviously i was very immature i didn't know what i wanted i didn't know what i was doing I had gone through a very traumatic event during that time of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I wasn't mentally there. I was actually suffering. I was hurting a lot. But sure. I didn't know. I didn't know until way later. Um, until now. <laughs> like probably 10 years after that. Um, or almost 10 years. But um, your brain isn't fully developed. Well, at least mine wasn't. Mine wasn't yeah, at no. all. Uh, I was just, I was just, I think about it and I'm like, wow, I was 18 and I was so young. But uh, I I do believe, Mm -hmm. I do believe that you met people in this world to make you better. Yeah. And to make you grow. So these things do happen, but the whole point of this is to not, (laughs) to not repeat it again. The whole point of these experiences that we go through is that so we can learn from it. And not be going and through not, cycles. And not repeat it again and mm-hmm. again because people get stuck in these cycles. And they're like, why does this happen to me? Why do I always get these shitty guys? Why does my girl always cheat on me? Why does this always fucking happen to what happens? Because you're stuck in a cycle because you, you haven't learned your lesson. You haven't healed from it. And you have to make the time to heal from it so that you can learn from it. So that it doesn't repeat itself in that so that you can be at peace. So you accept it and you move on. And obviously, like there's two sides to every story. Um, no one is perfect. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um Absolutely especially not. coming from all these tra- traumas in our family and all these horrible traumatic chains. Um, but you know, I've lied, I've cheated, 
um, I've lost myself and, and my ex mm-hmm. did too. She lost herself too. Um, but it wasn't any of our fault. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't my fault. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't, <laughs> we were just kind of part of the process. Mm-hmm. And we both knew we were hurting a lot, but we didn't want to hurt each other. Like, we know that we're not bad people in this world. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody is. Like, I mean, some well, people are, but but you know when they're not. Yeah. And, and obviously, when you're young and naive like that, and obviously we both were, mm-hmm. we didn't want to hurt each other. Like, no. we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. She had no experience. I had no experience. Nobody had experience. Everybody has trauma. <sighs> yeah, so... Um, so... How bad can a toxic relationship get? One day, one day you're going to get tired. Mm-hmm. You're going to explode. You're going to realize it eventually. We're humans. Like, we're, we're, you're going to get tired of it. You can't take it. Yeah. You're going to crash and burn and yell Everything and cry. Overflows. You're going to fucking lose your shit. Like, how long are you going to take it, guys? How long? If you're going through a toxic relationship right now, how long? How long? Are you going to wait 40 years? 50? You're going to fucking die like that? No. No, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why doesn't nobody fucking stop it? People see it. People, you have friends that you know that are going through this. And we still don't have the fucking boss to be like, yo, like, get out of it. Or, Or simply, they just don't listen. You guys need to be able to... And it's obviously easier said than done a hundred times, right? Because I remember being there. You remember being there. And you're just stuck in the freaking loop. And you're like, damn, like, when does a fucking train stop? Like, (laughs) I missed my fucking stop. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. Yeah, and and you're not alone, guys. If you feel alone and you feel like you're you're in a toxic relationship and you're going through something horrible just know that you're not alone and you got this and you can always have a brand new start exactly a new slate. yeah reach out to your family reach out to your friends reach out to the closest nearest person to you listen to a podcast listen to a motivational video sometimes you don't or you can't be okay with your family and that is fine you can pull yourself out of this you can you truly can you just need to believe in yourself and give yourself more love, more attention, self-care, you're worth it. Your life is worth it. From my experiences, from my personal experiences, I would just give one last final advice. I would say if you want to make things work within your intimate relationship, because that's kind of like what what we've been talking about, um, both partners should want to change. Exactly. They should work for change. Make the effort. You should put in the time. Mm Mm-hmm. And the effort, like you said. And this is the most important thing. Learn each other's love language. Exactly. It could be totally, completely different. And then you just feel like that person doesn't love you. But it's not really true. It could just be that your love language is different. And it's not matching with one another. Now, does that mean that that's not your person? No, absolutely not. It could be that that is your person. But you just need to kind of debunk everything and be able to break it down and say hey like you know once in a while i want some flowers you know can you make an effort to like get me some flowers? <laughs> we go back to our <laughs> second episode guys yeah, i like the shout outs you're making on each episode like, <laughs> go back to our first episode go back to our second episode i like that i like that but yeah guys go check out the other episodes um it gets real deep. The it conversations all, get they get really deep. It all kind of <laughs> ties in together. They all tie up together. Um, but yeah, uh, learning each other's love language is really important. That's kind of like what happened to me. We didn't know. We never communicated about yeah. the love language. We had t- total, completely different love language. Yeah, it's crazy. And she didn't under- understand mine, and mm-hmm. I didn't understand hers. So how the fuck was that going to work? It, it's not. And that's mainly one of the first things that why people break up. They don't that's love me. They don't care the for me. And they're reasons. like, I did care for you and I did this for you. But then that person feels, like, well, it's not about material things. And it's like, well, maybe that person doesn't think it's the material things. It's nice gestures. And it just goes on and on and on. So figure out your shit, guys. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> figure out what is important to both of you and come together. And it's never 50-50. It's always... It's never 50-50, and the reason why I say that is because you guys are going to need each other if you're in a relationship. If you're not, it's okay, but if you are, you guys are going to need each other, and it's not always 50-50, because come on, guys, let's face it, there's days where 
we have shitty days at work or we might be going through some personal issues within our mental health or we might be going through some personal issues within our physical health or our family issues and you know sometimes we can get 50 50 but a good partner should always be able to understand and learn about boundaries and learn what's important like hey should we talk about this right now no i don't feel good okay respect that respect that person's decision give each other that love that respect just adding on to that nat um i want i want you guys to remember and to really think about it. If you can go back and remember the last time that you were the most vulnerable. Like you were going through fucking shit. Okay. And you felt alone. And you felt fucking heartbroken. The first step to take from my personal experience. Is to forgive yourself. And to put yourself first. Mm-hmm. And then. Then that's when you begin to love yourself. So, all in all, it's just it's just healed together. Let's do this, guys. It's time. You're here for a reason. And you're listening to this for a reason. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in coincidences. There's no coincidences. It's all destiny, bro. Yeah. So, we really mean it when we, we share these thoughts. And we might not be perfect, but we feel like... We need to share these thoughts and these experiences because someone out there, someone out there needs to hear it. Yeah. And needs to feel like they can relate to this and they're not the only ones going through it. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to episode three of Toxic Traits and Relationships. Remember to love yourself endlessly. Don't forget to spread love and peace. Stay Stay golden. golden.